Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Alec Baldwin is getting into true crime. He'll be narrating a series of podcasts dealing with art fraud. No, it's not as boring or cerebral as you might think. Quite the opposite, actually. According to Sky News, quote, amid the ongoing legal battles, Baldwin has found time to narrate a new show about the Knudler Gallery, which has been written by the Vanity Fair reporter Michael Schneerson. I mean, imagine that. How many lawsuits is he actually facing? And in the midst of all of this, he's doing, he's kind of going back to work. He's working on a project and it happens to be in true crime. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment and let's get started. So if you scroll down to the audio clip at the bottom of this article, and that is from Deadline, I'll put a link to that in the description. The narrator says the art world is essentially a money laundering business. I'm not sure I'd classify the entire art world that way, but it's certainly a lot like that with a lot of artists. My own great-grandfather was a famous landscape artist regarded as one of South Africa's masters, so his art is worth quite a lot, and so a lot of his etchings were fake, lots of them. If you've been following my coverage of Van Gogh, I've got a playlist dealing with that, but I've also been covering it quite extensively Uh, on Twitter, also on Patreon, you'll know that there are a lot of fake Van Goghs floating around as well. I'll likely be talking about one world-famous candidate for being potentially fake in tonight's live stream. That's episode two in the Van Gogh series. I'll tell you a little bit more about that at the end of this episode, what time it is and so on. Now, the series that Baldwin will be narrating, I believe that actually kicked off today. Um, It's his first gig since the Rust incident. It is really quite, um, quite fascinating. According to a recent article in Deadline, quote, Art Freud is written by Michael Schneerson and based on his Vanity Fair article that chronicles the fall of the Knudler Gallery. In, in operation since 1846, that's what, 34 years before Vincent van Gogh died, and home to some of the city's greatest artists, the gallery's fortune changed the moment an unassuming woman walked through the door with a canvas under her arm, allegedly painted by the abstract expressionist master Marth, sorry, Mark Rothko. So began a 17-year relationship that would result in the sale of nearly 40 paintings from the likes of Motherwell, de Koenig, and Jackson Pollock, totaling more than, I guess, the sales were worth more than $80 million. The only problem was that they were all fake. And now this is an excerpt from one of those Vanity Fair articles dealing with the debacle. Quote, The London-based hedge funder had paid Knudler $17 million in 2007 for a Jackson Pollock painting, a painting said by Anne Friedman, to be a lost but miraculously found Pollock, then grown suspicious enough to submit it to forensic testing. Can you see you even get forensic tests in the art world? The test had revealed a yellow paint pigment not commercially available for years after Pollock's death in 1956. Lagrange wanted his money back and sent the gallery an email to demand it. Now, how much money did he want back? $17 million. And within 48 hours, the gallery shut down. And and then afterwards, Knudler said, you know, the shutting down had nothing to do with the Lagrange suit, end quote. Well, what do you think about that? Now, I've recently covered another story, arguably even more uh, crazy, Um, about a disputed artwork by Vincent van Gogh, a sort of aerial view of all. And I'm not going to go through the details of that, but basically had that artwork been authenticated, it would have arguably been worth $300 million, right? And of course, the Van Gogh Museum didn't uh, authenticate it. They said, I mean, there were quite a few things wrong with it in that case, His signature was done in brown ink when 
In reality, he would paint it in black ink and it would fade to brown over the years, amongst other things. But the other the sort of glaring problem was they said, you know, there was no way that Van Gogh could have painted this aerial view unless he had a helicopter, which he obviously didn't have. And so that is how art can change from being pretty much worthless to worth hundreds or tens of millions of dollars. And this is why this guy said something about it being, it can be a money laundering business. You know, forget the difficulty in printing fake um, notes or counterfeit notes. If you make an artwork out of nothing and you can convince someone that it's authentic, you're suddenly a multi, multi multi-millionaire. So you see, true crime in art is as vivid and colorful as in the as it can be in the meat and potato stuff we're used to, if not more so. You don't have to be an art expert. You don't need to have some sort of highbrow relationship with art. You don't need to be the sort of snooty individual. You don't need to be so, so sophisticated to understand how art works. Make sure you join me tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm sorry I have changed the time around a little bit from uh, next week, Wednesday. It'll probably be back to the 4 or 5 um, p.m. slot, Eastern Standard Time. But tonight it's going to be uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. tonight. Um, so make sure you join me. It's a members-only discussion on whether an art expert version on Van Gogh's finale uh, is credible. If it's true, is it true? Is it believable? Is it reasonable? And we're also going to look at one of the world's most famous portraits. Not only the most famous, it's also one of the most expensive. Arguably, it is the most expensive portrait ever painted. And then there's all kind of a duplicate of it as well. What is going on there? So we're going to see whether this art expert story on this particular portrait is accurate, is credible, and kind of what is actually going on there. Maybe it really is time that true crime properly occupied and interrogated the festering ooze that is essentially, quote, a money laundering business, end quote. I hope you'll join me tonight. Uh, I'll put a link in the description if you want to join and be a member. It'll be a members-only discussion, so the only way to participate, ask questions, make comments will be as a member. Hope to see you guys there. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.